people ask me, where are you from? I really want to say, at this point, the universe, because home is, in, in, in my spiritual um, understanding, right here where you are. And so I've had many homes, and I've migrated as humans migrate across the earth, as we have for eons of time. Uh, making home, creating home. Um, so I claim all of those places and all of those places where my spirit has lived before, such as Spain and England and Morocco and Madagascar. I've never been there, but I know I've lived there. So I am truly a child of the universe, a star seed, a kind of wonder kind, as we all are. And my powers are wish. my beloved Majadi has been encouraging me <laughs> to come forth with my powers which is wish what your heart desires truly in all things good and right and I make it happen I help to make it happen it's true and I've been very reluctant about using this gift but I won't go into that story because I have suffered for this power in the past as many of us who returned again and again have, but in this disp dispensation, it is time. Why am I speaking? I have a message. I have a message of great importance. But first, I will use this opportunity to advocate for the Dynamite Hill Smith Hill Community Ranchers. Whoop, whoop. Briefly, it is important to understand the roots from whence this work, this land work comes. So, uh, beloved Majadi is here, he's our historian, but I'm just going to briefly start with where I enter into this in about 2015. Came across a group of wonderful human beings um, who had founded an organization called Magic City Agriculture Project. So as a literary theorist, as a language person, word sound power is really important to me and these words magic city agriculture project just gripped my heart like what is this about and when i read about it the founders zach henson miss uh, virginia ward and anna cohen and the six aims of this just wonderful idea those words magic city agriculture project seem to be the answer the solution to a lot of our endemic problems here, problems that don't even need to exist, the beautiful abundance that we live in. So returning to the land and returning to the soil, returning to what is real and true, and being proud of that agrarian past, all of us, all of us who are here, no matter what you look like or where you came from, knowing that we come from the Mother Earth, it just moved my spirit. And I was at a low point in 2015 with my health, with my emotions, honestly didn't really want to I was like can I just renegotiate this contract because I don't feel good <laughs> but I, I found this work and it became a, a, what I call a practical life application because I, I used the principles I found in community based um, work and in uh, cooperative economics, I, I found a resonance in that that soothed my soul. And going back to the land and the, the truth that I've always felt, despite the hardness and the trauma of the city, is that there is magic here. There is magic here. This is a magic city. And it can be truly magical for the entire world if it were to rise to the occasion of its auspicious birth. So Magic City Agriculture pulled me in to do some on the ground work with community organizing, really community education. And one of the six aims of this great project, which I encourage all of you to research, was a community land trust. And so that is a model of community led development that is rooted in the civil rights movement of the 60s in the South. It's also found in um, cooperative living arrangements 
and um, circumstances around the world. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, I won't go into all of the, of the uh, details of it. Just know that what it does is it puts land in community control. And so right, right here, right now in Birmingham, we are facing what looks to be as unavoidable gentrification. It's the city's like, we're gonna do it. And then some folks are like, well, let's do it with compassion. <laughs> gentrification with compassion, you know, holding traumatized people while they get moved out to hell knows where. Say it. Um, urban regeneration, revitalization, these are loaded terms. Even civilization is a loaded term. Yeah, it is. All right, and so this work, Magic City Agriculture Project, kind of just, for me, was like, okay, if we're going to correct the way we're living, which is not in harmony with the earth, and it's oppressive to her creatures, to her children, to humanity, to all that is beautiful, then let's look at this. So the community land trust is one of those. And so I accept founder because I was the one who was like, hey, let's do that. But I certainly did not do it by myself at all. There was Mujadi Baruti, Zach Henson, Rob Burton, Richard Rice, um, Teresa Chandler, um, many folks who helped to pull this idea. And so we launched it in 2017. 2016. 2016 officially with incorporation and just plugging along ever since. And so I'm really, really pleased to be here in the company of folks like you, Hitty, with um, with Mutual Birmingham Mutual Aid, and my beautiful sisters over here who have come aboard with our work, as well as with Song and Gasp and all of these wonderful movements that are co coalescing in this ice field joyous moment of transformative, deep transformative change. All right, so I just want to go in into that and I'll be referencing the, the power of words as I go forward. Um, but it's, it's really important from where I'm coming from, speaking from all of those aspects of myself, and I want to share this with you, Inspire, that it's really hard when we hear about slings, when we hear about destruction, and yet look right now how beautiful everything is, right? So what I want to do is like encourage you and guide you if you haven't already begun to see it, this new earth that's emerging. And you do that when you sort of go into that feeling of when you were a child and when you felt safe. Because everything about childhood hasn't always been safe. But it should be. So let me go into this meditation I came up with for today, if you don't mind. When I was a child. When I was a child, the world was wonderful. Even the dirty snow of the cold winters in D.C. could not diminish the glory of the first light in spring when the cherry trees, trees bloomed. And I would say, Daddy, take me to see the cherry trees, please. When I was a child, the lemon trees in my grandparents' backyard on Kalmar Avenue gave forth huge yellow orbs, pregnant and full of the juice of the California sun. My Uncle Joel made lemonade that we drank like mother's milk. I sigh as I remember. I sigh as I remember when I was a child. When I was a child, the redwood trees of Mendocino, California called me every August summer to whisper secrets, ancient and primordial, of love and family and legacy among the great and tall branches. 
so tall that it appeared to be dusk at the height of day. When I was a child, the forest floor was my playground, and in the dark we gathered sticks to make a fire that kept us warm throughout the night. I was not afraid when I was a child. Mm -hmm. My relationship with trees as I grew up did not change. It remains immortal. Though now with the eyes of a woman, I can feel their pain, their memories, the magnolias and the great old oaks of the South, dogwood and pecan and pine, they know of blood. Mm -hmm. It was the ghost of the cutting of a great old magnolia on the campus that I shared once, years apart, with Mama Alice Walker, whose work, her blue body, all we know, one of beloved Majati's favorites, is the quintessential manifesto for protecting our Earth Mother and the magical word sound power of poetry. It's a true story. I speak before you today in my own soft poetic words of love and beauty and joy. For that child, she lives inside the woman I become. I say today that this earth, our mother, is our playground and we are her children all. Yet what does it mean to play? To play as a child plays. The art of sacred play. You see, when children play, there is laughter, there is joy, and there are rules. They can be arbitrary, like no touching lines and hopscotch or four square or my daddy taught me no cobs <laughs> growing up in Chicago, which means I'm not sharing, it's my candy. <laughs> no cobs, no cobs, no cobs. No cobs. Yes. They can be quite creative, the, the rules of children, but fair is fair. Children pure have an innate sense of justice unless they have been corrupted by systems that teach them it is better to profit from rather than protect. Teach. Our Mother Earth. I come before you today to remember the child in you who is a child of the universe, who is precious. The day of the Divine Mother is here. All who remember who your mother yes. is will hear her voice Ashe, oh. and will rise to the occasion of your most auspicious birth. Ashe. In this dispensation, we are healing. We will correct, make new, that which is out of order. The mothers have had enough yes. of the abuse yes. and exploitation of her children, the creatures, the air, the land, and the water. I invite you now to come inside her embrace, near her ever-flowing breasts, within her new earth. Now, she who is eternal has mm. different aspects. I want to speak in soft, sweet tones of love today to call you into her embrace. Yet, I have a fire bubbling. Speak on it, priestess. Go ahead, priestess. I'm water and I'm fire. And this fire. This fire, I feel like a Galadriel moment coming. <laughs> Come on. I feel Ma Kali at my back, y'all. Come on. Now. I am more than a little pissed. Yeah. Jema. Jema. Anger of a mother. That's right. Whose children suffer because the leaders of this land are deceptive and low down. Jema unprotective entirely of the families in our community, of the humanity in our community. I want to rant and rage and perhaps I shall. About a sister who died frozen 
in a park that is touted as a main tourist attraction in this magic city. A public park that is kept quite private as far as commons and land rights of the people, and yet we have a mixtape, y'all. Ashe, Ashe, oh. Party over here. For my Morehouse brother. Mm, call, or him, how call him out. Call in him out. Call him out. Upcoming magic city, <laughs> folks are magically, diabolically being oppressed and burdened by utility bills that are criminal, criminal yeah. in their intent. Yeah. But I digress. I have many aspects, but today I want to be gentle. Even though words like gentrification with compassion, equitable urban development, sustainability, civilization are loaded terms. And I like to fight loaded terms. I could go into the Seattle model as a great strategy to protect the land rights and the rights to the city of the working poor in Birmingham, Alabama, this bastion of high civilization and human rights. But Majadi is so much better at that than me right now. <laughs> and what I want to inspire you with is the vision. Come on. Come on, Mom. Community vision is the art and the act of inspiring and listening to the heart's desires of community members to regenerate their own communities. It's as simple as that. And yet it becomes complex when the heart's desires of the people do not line up with the long-term plans of a city plans that are not in the best interest of the majority of the folks who live in the city and work to keep it moving. Community visioning is listening to the youth lament about the lack of interesting things for them to do with their natural youthful exuberance and then asking them to create an idea of a perfect youth center and what would it, what would it have in it? Then working towards bringing that dream to fruition. Community visioning is the process of imagining growing food locally yes. in a network to meet the nutritional needs yes. of community members who live under food apartheid conditions. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that vision morphing into community owned and operated grocery stores. Solving problems, correcting what is wrong, correcting what is incorrect. Community visioning by community members is vitally important as cities change and grow. The question of the hour is, well, who does Birmingham want to become? Mm. Who? Mm. I invite you, all of you beautiful, to think about this question, dream about it, pray to your divine source about it. What do I want? How do I want to live upon this earth? And what do I want to leave for the next seven generations to come after yes. me? This is what it is all about. What legacy shall we create to leave our children? The child eternal who lives in each of us. I will leave you now to discussion of these words, this sound, this power I want you to remember. Remember who you are, remember her, and come into the new earth. See it, feel it, step into it, be it. Step away from this old, Call dying up. system that is a lie, that has told us to be in ways of being that are antithetical to life itself. Come away, enough. Mm. Enough is enough. And as you come, choosing life and regeneration, abundance and prosperity, healing for all of her children, great and we. Mm. And the old ways die away, sometimes acting fool. <laughs> Come on, you better say it. <laughs> remember to play, remember to laugh, remember to dance. Let the fairies mm. of the beautiful trees here despite the heaviness of that iron man because fairies don't like iron right <laughs> let them inspire joy for it is here the joy can you feel it yes ashe yes. ashe Can we get involved?
involved in this? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> so just check out our website. Um, we have work days all the time, and those can range from just we steward land is what we do. So we clean it, and we're planting flowers, and we're building a, an example of eco-housing. So there's plenty to get involved with. Is there a meeting, um, a regular meeting? Um, for the general public, no. We have sort of meetings when we do work days, but that is certainly something we can move into as we expand our board and our board is more active. Yeah, right. We can probably do <laughs> regular community education. Well, yeah, right. um, we got people in play. Presentations or, or you know interplays. So with this Dynamite Hill Community, uh, Smithfield Community Land Trust, we have three initiatives. That is permanently affordable regenerative housing, urban agriculture, and the cooperative businesses that can come out of that, as well as community education. So what you're asking about is exactly what, what we do and what we're gonna continue to do on a broader scale. I'll make sure y'all get the, for those who don't have it, I'll make sure you get the information. The website. Yeah. Well, thank you all for sitting with me in the dark. Woo woo! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. This is great. Thanks a lot. Pretty lit. Yeah. And I love all my goodies. So. You light up the dark. You light up the dark. <laughs> <laughs> you have the sunshine up there.